the Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. Issue one. Welcome to the Bitcoin Group. Today's guests, Andreas Antonopoulos, Derek J. Freeman, and Davi Barker. Attention live viewers, please use the Q&A feature of Google Hangouts, which I think we forgot to turn on. <laughs> so that's not going to work. You can only turn this off. Okay, so so much for that. You can All always right. stop and restart. We haven't done much. No, we're not. Nah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, let's Rudderless see. ship. Okay, fortunately, we, we do have a live advertisement to start things out with. Today's episode is brought to you by Alpha Lion Technologies. What's your roar? Roar! Roar! Is it my turn? Blah! <laughs> Check out Alpha Lion Technologies at alphaliontechnologies.com. What kind of roar are we going for? Are we going for like forest bear roar or lion roar? I was, lion I was going. Roar. I was going to say Ryan. But here wow, we go. Wow. Let's try to start the next issue. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Bitcoin 300. Bitcoin prices entered the stratosphere this week, breaking the previous all-time high and then climbing to the heights of 322 on the legendary Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox. What's the real value of Bitcoin? Can it really keep climbing? I ask you, Andreas Antonopoulos. Well, there's two ways to look at this. One is to look at this in terms of what came before, and certainly Bitcoin at 300 looks big if you're used to Bitcoin at 30 or Bitcoin at 100. There's another way to look at this. At $320, Bitcoin has a total valuation of $4 billion, which is a mid-level stock IPO uh, for a nice, decent new technology. As a currency, $4 billion as a monetary basis is uh, piddly. And so we are still very much in the foothills of the big Bitcoin price ascent. I think 320 is cheap. Davi? Uh, I completely agree. I think that it's low. I think that it's high. It seems high to us because we're early adopters, but I think that the people who see a headline that says Bitcoin is at an all-time high and they hesitate, well, they're going to be kicking themselves when it breaks 500. Derek J. The real value of Bitcoin uh, is subjective for the moment, and right now it's about $325, according to the market. Uh, but I think we're seeing a bit of a repeat of what we saw in April, where the price was mostly bolstered by speculation. I think we're going to see a huge run-up and then another drop-off like we did in April. Uh, it's the, not going to be the end of the story, of course, but I think that's what's happening right now. I think it's tough to say because it's tough to gauge something something's value without an all-time high. Before, I always kind of thought that Bitcoins are worth 250 even though we were buying them for $100 a coin. But now that it's over that, I have nothing to gauge by because we keep setting a new all-time high every day. I think people are thinking about this all wrong, uh, more along the lines of what Andreas said. It's a, it's a monetary unit, and it's going to be used as an alternative uh, currency uh, across the world, and uh, we don't even see 1% of the world's money in Bitcoin right now. And if we did, the price per Bitcoin would be closer to $100,000 each. So I think we're looking at a, a, a very low price, given uh, what it could be in the very near future. The price of one gold bar is around $45,000. Nobody thinks that's too high because nobody buys a whole bar. You buy a gold ring instead. So the reason Bitcoin seems high or perhaps low is because we're talking Bitcoins. From my perspective, I think that we're doing very well for the price of a millibit right now. So if Bitcoin keeps going up and we start seeing transactions that are in the sort of other decimal places in the in the in the spectrum, we're going to need to come up with better vocabulary. It's <laughs> it's uh, like millibit, decibit. I just I feel like um, you know quarters and nickels is what people are used to, and so I feel like there's going to need to emerge a vocabulary for these other units. 
that's the interesting thing about Bitcoin because you can infinitely divide it at each level of the currency expanding. We're just going to go to a lower and smaller unit. But right. Davi's right. We're going to need names for them. Uh, I disagree that that's uh, important at all. I think people in different places are going to call them whatever they end up calling them. What's essentially the important part is when you spend them, you're pricing it probably in terms of your local currency. So when I want to buy a drink at the bar, it's going to be $5 now and $5 tomorrow. No matter what the price of Bitcoin is, the merchant's not interested in pricing things in terms of Bitcoin. Yet. Yeah, yeah. I just think we should call them loony. <laughs> <laughs> loony. There's already a currency called loony. <laughs> well, in, in in Greek, it's called a bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and so every language will have its own name, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. As as Derek said. Exit question. What is Bitcoin's value on January first, twenty fourteen? Andreas. I think uh, the value of Bitcoin to humanity is a bit like the value of fire to humanity, and you can't press it based on the cost of a box of matches. That would be missing the point on a monumental scale. Bitcoin could be 20 in January, I'll be buying. If it's 2000 in January, I'll be buying. If it's 20,000 in January, I'll be buying. Derek J? Andreas is right. Bitcoin is priceless to humanity, but for the sake of playing this game, I think that we're going to see Bitcoin at $450 in January, and I'm expecting to see Bitcoin in the $1,000 range in 2014. Davi Barker? Um, I was going to say 500 but that's so close to Derek's guess. Yeah, I definitely think in, the, in 2014 we're going to start seeing it in the thousands. All right, issue two. Let's see. Computer. Issue two. Silk Road 2.0. The FBI spent two years tracking down the alleged Dread Pirate Roberts and shutting down the Silk Road. But now there's a new Silk Road and a new Dread Pirate Roberts. They rolled the rock up the hill and it rolled back down. What's the point of all this, really? Is Bitcoin always going to be linked to illegal drug sales? I ask you, Derek J., uh, no, uh, people are rightly pointing out already that uh, cash is used more often for drug sales and still is than, than Bitcoin. In fact, most Bitcoin transactions, I think, are still for donations. So I don't see where it gets this negative stigma except from people in the mainstream media who want to put Bitcoin down. But uh, it's, it won't be the end of the story. People are going to catch on and see the value in it for themselves. Davi Barker? I'm going to say yes. Uh, Bitcoin is always going to be connected to sales. It doesn't matter what you're selling. <laughs> there is always going to be a market for that thing in Bitcoin. Andreas? All right, let's drop the puritanical crap right now. <laughs> Recreational narcotics in all their forms are the second most traded commodity on this planet after food. If your preferred currency can't buy the second most traded commodity on the planet, it's not a very good currency. Yes, Bitcoin will be able to buy drugs. Otherwise, it wouldn't be very good money. It will be able to buy drugs and food and prostitution and sex workers. and It will be able to buy lots and lots of things and least lots of things. That's what money does. It's completely irrelevant to the big picture. Now, from the perspective of the FBI, I think the Silk Road was a very, very successful bust. They were able to turn the site into a honeypot for eight months. They have an open distributed ledger that gives them a full trail of all of the accounting information they need, and they have used that to take down two or three of the biggest sellers. So far, they haven't targeted buyers, and honestly, I'd have to give the FBI an A+. Now, I don't agree with the war on drugs, but if that's their mandate, they followed it pretty much as closely to the law as they, as they should. So, great job. Derek, your thoughts? Um, the thoughts on whether or not the war on drugs will ever stop? <laughs> well, no, is that the question? The, the answer is no. FBI, what you thought about how the FBI handled the Silk Road takedown. I have no comment on that. I, I, I wish uh, all peaceful people would be left alone. Exit question. Yes or no question. Will the war on drugs ever stop? Davi Barker. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As soon as the state collapses, there will be no more war on drugs. There you go. Andreas. 
The war on some drugs, excluding pharmaceutical drugs, smoking, and alcohol, will continue for a brief period of time, but unfortunately it's increasingly becoming intolerable by the people and increasingly visible to the people. So I predict the war on drugs has at most a decade left in it before it's relegated to the dustbin of history where it belongs with other racist and discriminatory policies of the past. Derek J. I'm shocked to be the contrarian on this one. I'm saying the war on drugs will not stop. I see no no end in sight. It's too it's too much of a power grab for them. Um, I don't know if you guys came across this story, but there was a, I think this was in New Mexico. There was a man who was uh, anally raped by police and doctors collaborating in an effort to confiscate drugs from him. That was a complete violation of every natural human right that this person had, and it was in the name of narcotics. So that is that is a a green light that is a a get out of jail free card for police officers that they're never going to give up voluntarily um, but I don't think that they can hold on to it I I think it's unsustainable but yeah they're not gonna call it off voluntarily I've got two pieces of bad news for you Davi with regard to that particular incident one it wasn't the first time two other motorists have come forward and said that this happened to them so this is a pattern of behavior two uh, given the warrant that was issued by a, by a judge and uh, promoted by the uh, district attorney to the judge, this was almost entirely legal, and that's right. what we should be worried about. It's worth noting, however, that the local news crew who investigated this incident discovered that the warrant that was given for the um, to search the man's private area was uh, not for the county in which he was searched. Oh, there were there are a few t technicalities, but uh, uh, the the law on warrants assumes good faith. So uh, so basically, they will get away with this, although they might stop it temporarily because of the publicity. Moving on from anal rape, this episode was brought to you by Biddy Licious. The officer was quite officious. I thought he was being over suspicious. I wasn't being the least bit malicious. I was just buying my bitcoins through Biddy Licious. Buy your bitcoins today at biddylicious.com. And don't hide them up your butt. Issue three, selfish mining. Could a rogue group of miners consisting of less than 10% really fork the blockchain and profit from the chaos? The old number was 51%. Now it's down to 10%. Is this bitcoin's fatal flaw? I ask you, Davi Barker. Why is the number down to 10%? I don't understand. It's a new kind of attack where they can make a copy of the Bit Bitcoin uh, blockchain, then they get people to mine that, and basically people choose to mine that because they're selfish. This forks the two chains. Uh, before, I think they could do a 51% attack, where they would kind of take over the mining pool with superior force. This is so it's essentially like like ten percent of people who have agreed to use a counterfeit blockchain. Is that essentially what you're telling me? If ten percent of if ten percent of Bitcoin miners saw this counterfeit blockchain and thought that it was more profitable, which it would be because it would be being mined less than the popular blockchain, they could doesn't split that, off. Doesn't that kind of just make it like an altcoin? <laughs> like uh, I don't. It, how does it is, that? How, it is how like is an that? altcoin until they start <laughs> spending the same bitcoins twice. Then you've got a problem. Right, so you can't spend from one network into the other and you end up with some sort of a conflict? I, I have no it's, idea. <laughs> it's, basi it's basically a shortcut that allows you to orchestrate an attack on the network by delaying the propagation of blocks that you find and going one, two, and three blocks ahead of where the current blockchain is. Now you, can, you would be the only one able to do block two and block three because you've hidden the fact that block one has just been mined, and therefore you can continue building a little chain independently. It gives a slight advantage overall over mining uh, by giving you a higher possibility of gaining the reward without having the adequate hashing power. It's a highly theoretical attack. In practice, it has two major problems. One, it would require collusion of that number of miners to do it, and they would have to act against their better interests, and their better interest is far more aligned with the fact that Bitcoin as a whole would suffer such a, a horrible uh, such a horrible strike because of some attack like this that it would kill the, the goose that lays the golden egg. So the incentives are aligned completely against selfish mining uh, because it's such a nuclear move. 
Uh, furthermore, there are ways to stop this. There are ways around. It's very difficult to do in practice, and it would be detected. And that's very, very critical. It would be detected. So what this has led to is a great conversation within the developer group as to how to uh, dis disarm this particular type of attack with better monitoring and some tweaks to the mining algorithm. But really, it's no big deal. It really is no big deal. It requires, under very carefully aligned theoretical conditions, a certain number of people to collude against their interests. And I don't think that would work. Derek? Jay. I'm excited and comforted by the fact that there are people out there who want to spend their time and energy researching ho potential holes that Bitcoin has. However, I think Andreas said it best, these people aren't going to shoot themselves in the foot. They depend on Bitcoin to have value in order to gain, and if they were to do this successfully, it would lose its value. So there's really no such thing as irrational miners. I think the, the debate is a misnomer. There's, it's not selfish miners versus honest miners, but r rational versus irrational. And in this case, there are no irrational uh, miners because they won't bite the hand that feeds it. I agree. It sounded much more like a theoretical attack, but maybe if an outside force like a government or a competing cryptocurrency was able to obtain 10% of the miners, they could carry this kind of attack out? Absolutely, they could, and, that, and that's the whole point. This is a theoretical uh, attack that the miners who are currently in the environment would have to get a short-term advantage in reward while ignoring the long-term possibility that they may have just stabbed the currency in the back. So that's why the incentives don't exactly align. But for a party that doesn't care about Bitcoin, this is a possibility. It's a very remote possibility. It's very difficult to pull off. And now that we know about it, we're not only going to be watching, but also creating countermeasures. This is really, really good basic computer science research uh, from Cornell. It's a great paper, it's a great analysis, and it's a great addition to the science of Bitcoin. It has nothing to do with the real world of mining today. Absolutely. Exit question. Will a technical flaw take Bitcoin down, or will it be patched? Derek J. Every flaw will be patched. There are too many people with too much invested in Bitcoin success. Davi Barker. Depends on what the technical flaw is and how long of a timeline you're talking about. I mean, I suppose you go out 500 years, sure, I'll, someone will come up with something. <laughs> but uh, I'm not worried about it. Andreas? There are two types of uh, technical flaws. Uh, the technical flaw that could uh, take down uh, Bitcoin would require... Uh, some bug that actually reveals keys, reveals them in a way we don't notice, and reveals them for a very, very long time. That would effectively damage the ownership of the credentials and keys behind individual Bitcoin outputs, and that would be extremely damaging to the credibility of the network. Anything except that type of attack uh, can lead to a temporary collapse of Bitcoin from which we can reboot by rolling, down, rolling back the blockchain to a period in time we all trust and restarting from there. There is no other way to take down Bitcoin completely right now. Uh, so unless it's, a, unless it's an attack that's long and slow and silent that reveals all the keys, we have nothing to worry about. Moving on. Issue four. Bitcoin is a joke. The <laughs> insider has labeled Bitcoin as a joke because it is not backed by any country. <laughs> Many call Bitcoin a complicated Ponzi scheme. Can a currency truly exist without geographical borders and hard copies? Does the lack of paper bitcoins and a central bank forever doom Bitcoin to performing stand-up in small clubs? I ask you, Andreas Antonopoulos. Uh, Bitcoin is not a joke. Uh, Bitcoin is probably one of the most significant computer science inventions of the 21st century. It introduces two fundamental distributed computing concepts, the blockchain and consensus or proof of work in a timestamp database. Those inventions are going to be reused again and again and a lot more than currency. As a currency, it's still an experiment. It's not backed by anything except the enormous computation power of every mining uh, gear out there, as well as the, the will and support of all of the people who own uh, Bitcoin. The worst case scenario fail back of Bitcoin, even under the attack scenario we just discussed, is it becomes as ridiculous as a national fiat currency like the dollar. Bitcoin's worst failure is that it becomes just like another currency. So, no, Bitcoin is not a joke. 
It may have problems. We will fix them. Cryptocurrencies are here to stay. Cat's out of the bag, and it is one of the most exciting inventions of the century. Derek J. Um, no, Business Insider is wrong. Um, Bitcoin is not a joke because it's not backed by any country. That's not important, and it hasn't been important in the past when the U.S. has had uh, competing currencies that were issued by private banks, uh, private scripts. The only thing that makes Bitcoin different from that is that it's digital and decentralized. Um, so the successes, we have historical examples of this. It, it doesn't make it a joke uh, because the business insider author is just not familiar with something similar. Uh, he's just not doing his history reading. And a currency can absolutely exist without geographic borders and hard copies. Although the historical examples that I cite did have hard copies, uh, we know that in the digital age uh, we can have receipts and uh, other things, uh, signatures given in a digital form. And uh, geographic borders, we've already seen that in Thailand, that certainly doesn't matter. There's no types of uh, restrictions that people can put on this currency. Davi? When did Business Insider jump the shark? I thought this was a fairly, like, reputable publication. <laughs> okay, like... <laughs> Yeah, okay, Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme, except that there is no Ponzi and there is no scheme. It's a completely transparent system. Like, like I, I, I have lost a lot of respect for Business Insider. I can't even believe this prompt that I'm reading. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. Economies and currencies and commodities can exist without the backing of a country. I can't believe anybody would even ask that question. Like... All right, moving on to predictions. This is the part of the show where I ask you to predict something, and maybe you didn't prepare. Is everyone prepared? <laughs> Andreas Antonopoulos. <laughs> we'll move on to you, Derek J. Next week, Bitcoin will be below $300 again. Davi Barker. Um... Um, I'm going in the alien. Satoshi Nakamoto is going to reveal himself as an alien invader, and Bitcoin is the first wave of that invasion. I, I know you just took my prediction. That's why you just took <laughs> Andreas Antonopoulos. We're going to see 1,000 Bitcoin long before January at this rate, and we'll go logarithmically. Next year is going to be 10,000 Bitcoin, not 1,000. I actually have a serious prediction. I think very soon we're going to see uh, Bitcoin video games, and we're going to see either simple flash animation games or things like that that you find free online that are going to incorporate Bitcoin as a reward system. Or an in-game currency, both. Or an in-game currency. Well, that would make it the same thing, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah, there's imagine, no reason to separate uh, in-game. There's no reason to separate in-game currency for purchase items. And uh, and reward system with Bitcoin, you could do all three. That's a great prediction, Davi. <laughs> Congressional hearings are coming up. Once Congress starts looking into Bitcoin, they won't stop until they have a Bitcoin tax. We're out of time. Until next time. <laughs> bye bye.